So we also want to talk about uh, Tesla shares rising again today and now up more than 70% on the year. Today's boost coming from a Barclays note. The firm initiating coverage on Tesla with an overweight rating and a $275 price target. Senior Autos reporter Proz remaining here with us now. Proz, what's the case here from Barclays on Tesla? I mean, they're basically saying that initiating here, Tesla stands out above all the picks in the auto space, uh, which is kind of a big call, I think, from their point of view. Uh, talking about how there's two clocks, a two clock framework, right? So there's the first clock, which is the near term, that's cyclical, the economy, spending on, on inventory and cars and parts, things like that. And then the far term, which is secular changes, the big transformation in EVs, the huge sort of rollout, how much it's going to cost. Uh, how the society changes, right? So they, Dan Levy, the analyst there, says that Tesla is well positioned in both worlds, right? From a cash point of view, they have a huge cash war chest that they built up over the years. They're able to spend on their new cars there. And then also from a uh, long-term kind of their EV and software prowess, they have sort of the ability to, they're the only company that has been mass produced EVs, right? Like on a huge scale. And they have the sort of the, the software kind of backbone that they've been using developing for many years. So that's, those are two kind of bull cases for Tesla right here, right now. Uh, just real quick, Ford and GM, equal, equal weight. He likes them both. He likes GM more, a bit more than Ford because of their kind of progress on EVs, execution, and the AV cruise technology. That really surprised me. Now, we saw a bad quarter from Ford, but they really came out of the gate so strong in the EV space, in particular with the Ford F-150. To hear Barclays choose GM over Ford in that space was a big surprise. Was it something beyond the production issues we've heard of? I think it's because, and I didn't see this in the note, but I think it's because GM has their sort of rollout with the Ultimate platform that you can make multiple cars off of, whereas okay. the Mustang Mach-E, the Lightning all use different platforms. It costs more money to develop these things. You have one-off sort of platforms lying around. It's easier to kind of use one and then scale it to multiple different cars. When is that Silverado out? The this EV. year, mid, mid this year, and the cheaper one will come out later this year, too. Okay. So mid this year, they're Excited expensive. About that one? I, I really want to see more and learn yeah. more about it. You know I love the F-150 life. You do love the <laughs> F-150. What also struck me about this note was a call here that we're seeing on Rivian. Lots of questions about what the future of Rivian looks like. They actually said that it might be best position here just in terms of following in Tesla's footsteps, which we're seeing that reflected in the stock price today. Yeah, a really nice move for Rivian today. I mean, almost 9% there. Uh, talking about how Rivian sort of is, they don't want to say that they're the next Tesla, but they're sort of the only pure play EV that could possibly be the next Tesla because of the fact that they have like sort of a moat there with their products, right? Like no one else is making adventure vehicles. They have their own sort of technology. They're, they're really kind of cornering the market in that space and they're pure play EV. So that's sort of what uh, Dan is saying, Levy is saying that this is sort of the best positioned uh, automaker to be the next Tesla, not that they're saying that they might be the next Tesla. I, I love these cars. I'm seeing more of them than I ever thought I would. But what is that moat? What is that unique technology that Rivian has that others don't have? Well, I think it comes down to the fact that they have, it's both product and tech, right? So from a product point of view, there's no other uh, EV pickup or, or SUV with four motors on each corner. They have their own software. Uh, yeah, they use different components, different suppliers to make their batteries and their motors. but they're also uh, kind of bespoke to them, right? And they're kind of cornering that market. Not, it's not a work truck, it's an adventure truck. And I think also from a technology point of view, they have a lot of cool little features like the, the gear tunnel in the, in the truck. Uh, like I said, these, the four motors at each wheel kind of give you like pure, uh, they call it uh, torque vectoring on each angle. I mean, it's, this is all nerdy stuff, but it's Did really Did you cool drive stuff. one? Have you driven one? Yes, we reviewed one. Uh, I thought it was incredible. It drives like a sports car, but it can kind of go over loose, loose gravel wow. of rocks like floating over the ground. Shares loved it. Uh, investors loved it. Up, yeah. up 8% today uh, yeah. on this news. All right, Pross, thanks so much. We